Hello, everyone. My presentation is Alpha Seminar, a course for new graduate students in statistics. Now, most graduate programs in statistics focus on the technical skills needed by a student to have success during graduate school and after graduation, such as estimating the effect of a variable or simulating a probability distribution. Often lost, though, in graduate programs are the non-technical skills that students need for success, uh, such as the basics about the education program itself, career paths, ethical obligations. And why does this occur? Well, it could be due to poor or no advisement or simply because a student doesn't know what they don't know. So back about five years ago, I was a graduate chair for the Department of Statistics at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, and I helped lead a comprehensive revision of our master's and PhD requirements. One of the courses that I worked on getting approved by the faculty and developed myself was a course called Alpha Seminar that was meant to address some of these non-technical skills. Now, this particular course is a first year, first semester course for new master's and PhD students in our department. Simply, it's one credit hour, 50 minutes per week, and the grading is pass or no pass. If you'd like to see a weekly schedule for it, uh, you can go to my course website, chrisbiller.com stat810, where 810 is the corresponding course number. Now, at the very beginning of the course, and then periodically, periodically through the rest of the course, we talk about the basics of, of our program itself, such as the basics of our university system and the department. We talk about a program of studies form that all students need to fill out that indicates what courses they plan to take during their entire career. And we also talk about how to find an advisor. And we talk about uh, what courses they should take next semester. But then we also start talking about, well, what are the expectations of our program in terms of, well, how many hours per week uh, should you expect to work? Uh, what kind of performance, academic performance, uh, should you, uh, is needed, let's say, to move on to the PhD program if you're uh, starting at the master's level? And what kind of timeline would you expect uh, to complete a master's and or PhD? We also talk about tips for success that I've gotten from other students and also from my own experiences as a student. And then we put some of this stuff together in terms of an assignment, where the main purpose of this assignment is for me to learn about each student so that I can point them in the right direction in terms of our program and in terms of where they would like to go in their career. Next, what we do is we start talking about career paths early on in the semester, where we break things up into industry, government, and academics. In industry, we talk about the variety of jobs that statisticians you can have, including those that our graduates have had. Uh, we end up focusing uh, on or talking about a little bit more detail about one particular type of job in the pharmaceutical industry. In terms of government, we talk about well, what is official statistics, where the job opportunities there. We talk about also doing research at um, in the government, such as let's say at a Department of Energy government laboratory. And then we talk about academics. We spend some time talking about well, what does a professor professor do, uh, where do they spend their time, um, and so we relate this to a nice little comic from Jorge Cham of PhD Comics, which talks about where professors spend their time, where the department and the university would like them to spend their time, and how a professor themselves would like to spend their time. Then we relate some of this to um, the type of appointments that one can have in terms of teaching versus research institutions, nine-month versus 12-month uh, appointments. We take some time talking about promotion and tenure. First of all, defining what it is, what are the benefits of it, um, and we uh, take some time uh, to discuss uh, Rahika Nagpal's uh, very good uh, a blog post that she had on Scientific American's um, uh, website, which talked about her experiences for promotion and tenure at Harvard, and also how, um, it, how she dealt with um, um, the work-life uh, balances in uh, achieving uh, tenure and achieving promotion. 
we talk about the growing uh, prevalence of non-tenure track positions, the positives and the negatives associated with that. And then also we talk about, well, in academics, uh, at professor level, and even as a student level, you know, you have a lot of opportunities available to you. Which opportunities should you say yes to? Which opportunities should you say yes but to? And which opportunities you should say no to? And I relate this to a presentation that I once gave at a Wiener conference. In terms of an assignment uh, corresponding to career paths, I have my students do a variety of different things where one of them is to find a job that may be of interest to them from the three different areas of uh, industry, government, and academics. And for one of those particular positions, uh, find what you think would be a corresponding starting salary based upon information I've given them about what likely starting salaries would be. Now, uh, to extend the stuff that is in the industry and also government uh, uh, career paths, um, I invite three alumni guest speakers from industry and government to give uh, to meet with my class, each of them for a single class period. And I try to get um, our alumni or other guest speakers from a variety of different areas in terms of where they're working and also what their last degree was, master's or PhD. And these guest speakers um, take questions and answers from students. They discuss their current job and they also give students tips for success. In terms of an assignment that I give my students relative to this is that before they meet with this guest speaker, uh, uh, my students are expected to research a little bit about the guest speaker and develop a question that they could ask them. Also to coincide with the industry and government types of jobs, uh, we discuss internships in terms of, well, what should you do beforehand to get an internship? Uh, where can you find job announcements? What should you, what should your CV look like, a resume look like? What should a cover letter look like? Then at the internship, what should you do? How do you get the most out of it? And then after the internship, what can you do as well, such as follow up with the company um, because maybe you might want to work with them in the end after graduation. In terms of an assignment that I give my students, I ask them to find an internship announcement, um, write a corresponding uh, cover letter, write a corresponding resume that would be appropriate for that, and then I go ahead and critique it, and my hope is then that the students will go ahead and apply for that inter internship opportunity. We also talk about professional societies. You know, why are these professional societies important? How can you contribute uh, to them as well? Uh, we talk about a variety of different professional societies, but our focus is mainly on the American Statistical Association. We talk about its structure. We talk about um, how it gives uh, information about job opportunities. We talk about publications that the ASA provides, especially those that are geared more towards students. We also talk about other student resources, such as StatTrack. We talk about the how and the why of accreditation for statisticians. For an assignment, uh, my students uh, become a member of the American Statistical Association where I've gotten my uh, department to actually pay for their first year membership. After professional societies, this leads nicely into going to conferences. We discuss why, our con why conferences are important. It's not necessarily just a place to present your research, for example. Uh, we talk about a variety of different conferences with a focus more on JSM. And I relate this to a paper that I've had in Amstat News for a number of different years that's usually published in May that talks about how um, new JSM attendees can get the most out of the meetings. So with respect to JSM, we talk about uh, what you should do beforehand in terms of like, for example, understanding the types of presentations so that if you are to present um, what kind of presentation you should uh, try for. We talk about, well, what do you do at JSM? You know, what should you do upon arrival? 
Um, how could you, for example, attend a continuing education course for free? We talk about what to do after JSM so that what happens at JSM doesn't just stay at JSM. For an assignment because of the time in the semester uh, that we're at, uh, what I usually have my students do is put together a budget so that they could attend the ENR spring meeting the following uh, semester. Then our last main topic that we discuss is ethics. And we talk about, well, what are the published, let's say, standards for being a statistician? And we focus on some of these standards uh, where, for example, we talk about plagiarism. I have a nice example of, unfortunately, a student, a past student in our department who actually plagiarized a paragraph from another research paper and then had it published in their own research paper. We discuss why that was plagiarism and how plagiarism could have been avoided for that particular paragraph. We talk about the integrity of data and the corresponding methods used to analyze it, uh, such as how do you handle unusual or influential, influential observations? And we don't just necessarily delete them. And we talk about making sure to tell the whole story when you write a report or when you write an actual paper so that you talk about the positives and the negatives of what you're doing and not just focus on uh, the positives that maybe support your research hypothesis. For an assignment, uh, a highlight that I know students uh, tend to like is I have them watch uh, an episode of Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. And in this episode, Oliver talks about scientific studies, the positives and negatives of them. Now, I first taught this course in 2016. And in preparing for this presentation, I thought it would be good to go back to that cohort of students and ask them what they thought was good or what, or what was bad about the corresponding course, how they benefited from it. And I have quotes here from three separate students, and I'll just have us uh, take a look at one particular one that really summarizes what uh, the general impression of the course was for the students. And the student said, I really enjoyed STED 810. It was a great class to have at the start of my graduate career. This course provided information about opportunities outside of the classroom to get involved with during my graduate career and gave me insight into numerous career paths after graduation. When I taught the course in 2019, I gave a pre and post test to my students where there was 14 questions on the test. Uh, questions like, well, what is p-hacking, for example? And without students knowing this, the post-test was exactly the same as the pre-test. And I had not given back the pre-test that I got from the first day of the, of the course. And based upon the pre and the post-test, the pre-test, the students average about a 30% grade on it, with the post-test, about an 83% grade. So there obviously was some improvement from taking the course. If you'd like to know more about my course, you can go to my course website, chrisbiller.com slash stat810. You'll see my schedule with class recordings, my corresponding notes, and assignments. And if you, by chance, teach a non-technical statistics course, uh, send me an email. I'd be very interested in talking to you about perhaps organizing a um, session at JSM 2022 that would include information about uh, your course. So with that, that is the end of my presentation.